we wish to convey his best wishes to you and your delegation here today. Um, and also, um, I just sincerely thank and acknowledge our chief guest and everyone who is here, who extended help to help us in making this event a uh, historical success. And thank you for being uh, with us today. Um, Again, um, I would also like to welcome those that are participating from um, outside campus and also from our regional campuses, Pacific uh, through online. Uh, I'm so delighted to say that um, the University of Bergen and also the University of the South Pacific have partnered for the Nowhere Pacific uh, Ocean Climate Scholarship Program known the NPOC to recruit our 25 fully funded uh, BHD uh, programs and scholarships uh, from USP member countries. Uh, on top of those uh, 12 member countries, it's also extended to the uh, Papua New Guinea, Federated States of uh, Micronesia and Palau. It's funded for the uh, period of uh, 2021 to 2025 by the NOAA's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Norwegian Agency for Foreign Affairs and the Norwegian Agency for Development and Cooperation. This public seminar today is part of the ongoing One Ocean Expedition, which is another collaborative partnership between University of Bergen and the University of the South Pacific to dialogue and learn about oceans, climate change and sustainable development. Your Excellency, you are here today because of that collaborative support to realize the Blue Pacific vision for international security and sustainable development through knowledge creation and transfer. We grow and scale successfully with your dedication toward regional and global goals. The Norwegian government and University of Bergen are an integral part of USP's success story and we need you as much as you need us. I think more importantly, I think um, as we just then, a week away from last week, the uh, all the countries of the, uh, or leaders of the uh, Pacific Island countries uh, got together and they uh, endorsed and approved a program of Pacific, uh, Blue Pacific Strategy for 2050. So that program, I think it's very, very critical and very important. And it's just um, timely that the scholarship that you are providing, if most people are not really aware of, but this great vision of 2050, the bulk of that work will also depend on the contribution that are being um, provided by these 25 scholarship at a very high level for PhD researchers who are gonna be really helpful in trying to address or trying to guide the implementation of the um, uh, strategy, 2050 strategy for the whole Pacific, uh, Blue Pacific uh, region. It is my privilege to introduce His Excellency Ambassador uh, Borglek Lazen. And Ambassador, um, just for Information of everyone. I think the ambassador uh, Paul Gulek Lazen is a career diplomat with 27 years of international experience, including Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs postings in Belgrade, a charge of affairs from 1991 to 1994, in New York as counselor for Norway in the UN Security Council 2001 to 2002, and in Moscow as deputy head of mission. 2002 to 2007. Outside the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Paul has served as a diplomatic advisor in the office of the Prime Minister of Norway from 1998 to 1999, and as a Chief of Staff and Director at the, UN, the UNO World Food Program in Rome from 2007 to 2013. While at the uh, World Food uh, Program, both sat in strategic leadership group and represented the WFP in G8, G20, 
and the United Nations in the agency bodies. After returning to foreign a Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Oslo in 2013, Ambassador Paul served in the United Nations Department as Project Director for Policy and Coordination and Agenda 2030, SDG, and a Special Envoy for Security Council Affairs, responsible for strategy and policy for preparing Norway's membership of the United Nations Security Council in 2021-2022. As Ambassador of Norway in Canberra from September 2018, Ambassador Ball is responsible for Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, Tonga, Samoa, Kiribati, Nauru, Tuvalu, and the Cook Islands. Ambassador Paul has a Master of Science degree from the London School of Economics and a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Oslo. He received the French Audrey du Merit Equipoul during the French G20 presidency in 2011. Ambassador Paul is very fluent in English, manages in French, and understands Spanish and German. Paul is we are very uh, honored that you have his uh, wife here, Christine, IB biology teacher, and the son Stefan is a student at uh, Bocconi University in Milan. And that, without further ado, I now warmly invite His Excellency Ambassador Paul Philip Lazen to deliver this seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency Ambassador Paul Philip Lazen. Thank you very much, Deputy Vice Chancellor, for this uh, warm welcome. Thank you to your staff and team at the research office and the uh, collaborative uh, stipend program that uh, we are very proud uh, to have uh, initiated uh, during my uh, time here as ambassador uh, to Fiji and all the other Pacific Islands, the first Norwegian ambassador ever to all the Pacific South Pacific Islands. Uh, since 2018. Uh, I'm very proud uh, that we have, uh, with the help and the collaboration of University of Bergen, uh, been able to, in spite of the uh, problems caused by the pandemic, to uh, get now the uh, stipend program up and ready uh, to run uh, for 24 students from all the Pacific region to study ocean. Uh, oceans in all its aspects, oceans and climate, uh, which is also the topic of uh, today's uh, uh, lecture um, that uh, I will spend the next uh, few minutes talking about in the context of Norwegian foreign policy. Um, I, as the Deputy Vice Chancellor said, I am also an academic uh, from uh, my university background. Um, and I love to be at universities. I'm so happy that so many of you could make it today in the hall, in spite of the fact that this is a, a, a holiday time, it's break time uh, at university, but still a lot of people in the hall and even more, uh, probably hundreds, maybe thousands online. Uh, welcome to all uh, of you who are listening uh, in uh, to this uh, uh, historic event, of course, it is not quite as historic uh, as uh, it was uh, three years ago uh, when uh, the Crown Prince of Norway stood uh, here uh, in front of this uh, auditorium and uh, spoke uh, also about oceans um, uh, during the first visit ever by a Norwegian royal to this uh, part of the world. Uh, but I'm uh, very proud and honored to follow in his uh, footsteps and to be here during um, the farewell visit of myself and my wife uh, before we have to leave the region after four years next uh, month. So um, I believe I have uh, uh, some PowerPoint things that I can use to illustrate. So it's not so boring just to listen to my words, but also to see some photos. Here we have, is there uh, people then, so I just tell you when to move on to the next photo? Huh? They control it from there. Okay, so this is me when I arrived here, 2018. We we presented 
to the previous president and uh, uh, the um, issue uh, of uh, oceans has always been central to our collaboration with, uh, with uh, Fiji. Please, next one. Um, this is me on the left, but the crown prince with sunglasses in the middle, this is taken here in the Suva Bay when we uh, had the, the visit uh, on board a catamaran. Uh, ship, uh, some uh, uh, solar power driven uh, with uh, some people that you may know uh, on the photo from uh, from Fiji. Uh, and uh, next to me is the Minister for Development, uh, who uh, is no longer Minister for Development. We had a change of government uh, in the meantime, but he was uh, convinced and kind enough to come up with the funds for the NPOC uh, stipend program uh, while he was uh, here in the region. We also visited Tonga. Uh, and Samoa, and we saw with our own eyes the impact that uh, climate change has on uh, the vulnerabilities of this uh, region and uh, how we can help uh, to, uh, to collaborate with, with this region for the first time in a bilateral way, not only through the multilateral institutions, which of course uh, we know always always doing through the World Bank to the United Nations system, etc. But this is the first time we have a bilateral program, and I'm very uh, happy to be here to be able to let's say kick this off uh, officially together uh, with you. Next, this is um, we played a bit of rugby. Uh, the crown prince in the middle with the minister for development and myself and a couple of smaller guys from the local uh, teams. They um, we had two teams. I was with the uh, Crown Prince on one team and together with uh, some of your under 22 rugby players and then the Minister for Development on the other team. Uh, I have to say I was a bit surprised the, the local team wasn't as good as we had expected because when the Crown Prince and I were running to, to they we managed to somehow just uh, go past them and score. And, and that was uh, a bit surprising, but uh, you know, we were very proud. The only one who didn't, uh, read the memo was the minister who ran after the crown prince and almost tackled him to the ground before I shouted, suggested that he don't do it. <laughs> so he was a competitive man. Um, next uh, photo, please. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, uh, main or the other reason I'm here uh, and we are here today is uh, to welcome this fantastic ship, the tall ship, uh, Statsrod Lemkur, uh, which is anchored uh, still at the port here in Suva after a three week uh, round trip uh, in, uh, in the Fijian islands, uh, having been on, uh, not on the road, but on the sea for already a year uh, and more, uh, circumventing the globe uh, and uh, uh, spending a lot of time here in Fiji and the South Pacific, very pleased about that before they continue on to Palau and Japan and then to Africa uh, and uh, around the uh, Pacific and Atlantic back to Norway next April. Uh, this is the One Ocean Expedition that some of you have already, and we have some of our students and crew uh, here in the hall today who have been on this ship and will continue to be on this wonderful ship uh, for the rest of uh, the journey. And we also had several 29, I believe, students from the USP uh, on board for the last uh, few weeks. And I'm so happy that this was possible uh, to create this uh, strong bond uh, between the students and also between our countries and, and peoples. So uh, we uh, visited, uh, as you may have seen in the newspaper yesterday, uh, the ship uh, together with the Prime Minister Banamarama uh, two days ago. And he was impressed and uh, told us about his time as a Naval officer and how they were also climbing up and down these 100 meter masts. And uh, uh, the ship is 100 meter long and it has about 100 students on board. It's an amazing, uh, beautiful ship which goes on sale 95% of the time uh, and can go very fast, but mostly at leisurely pace. And of course, uh, renewable energy of uh, wind power, which is uh, the future for us and the world. Next. Here we are on board with uh, my good friend also, Suji Edusam, who's the EU ambassador here. I'm sure you have met him, many of you, and the prime minister having a good laugh 
uh, on the deck of the ship. Next. And the captain, Jens, he just uh, um, left yesterday after months and months on, uh, on the sea. He uh, is flying home today uh, to his wife and kids and is being replaced by another excellent Norwegian captain uh, who will take the ship uh, uh, on the next uh, eight months uh, journey uh, back to Norway next year. Next. Okay, so this is the world, uh, just to show you where Norway is. It's, uh, well, you know where Norway is. You see Europe, and on top of Europe, it's Norway. It's the very long country, very thin country. Um, and of course, you are on the opposite side of the world, down in the right-hand corner, uh, around uh, New Zealand, Australia, with uh, the blue. The dark blue is the interesting part here. These are the economic zones. Uh, that are established under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. And when you look at uh, uh, your region and, uh, and Norway, there's a lot of excellent dark blue, uh, which, is, uh, which is part of our, uh, which is our territorial, sovereign territorial waters. I'll talk a bit more about that. Next picture, please. This is uh, more detail of Norway. Uh, as you see, neighbors Sweden, Finland, and Russia. Uh, we always uh, have to deal with our big neighbor in the, in the East uh, in a constructive way, including on the fisheries collaboration to make sure that we don't fish too much. And we have good collaboration there to make sure that we still have codfish um, to serve on the Christmas tables, the bacalao that the Southern Europeans love. Uh, because we're managing this sustainably and very well together with our Russian neighbors. The uh, colored areas are actually all part of our 200-mile uh, economic zone established in the Law of the Sea Convention from 1980, the most important, maybe, outcome of the United Nations ever. Uh, also for you uh, in this uh, part of uh, the world, you will see how we are dividing uh, next to Scotland, uh, uh, Iceland, Greenland, which is, of course, part of Denmark, and then the um, Svalbard, uh, which is the Norwegian uh, archipelago uh, offshore, uh, the mainland. So just to illustrate where we are and, and the importance of oceans for us. Next picture. And here you have your uh, region, uh, similar, uh, small island states, big ocean states. Um, of course, uh, Norway is bigger. Uh, we are number 62 in terms of land size, but we are number in the, among the 192 nations of the world, but we are number 17 uh, when it comes to the uh, economic zone. The 17th biggest nation of economic zones, which is similar to Papua New Guinea, uh, a bit bigger than Fiji, a bit smaller than Kiribati, which is the biggest economic zone of all the uh, Pacific islands. Our population is like New Zealand, about 5 million uh, people, um, much smaller than Australia, bigger than the others. Very, uh, uh, we are a very wealthy nation, very successful economy, and to a large extent, thanks to oceans and energy, as well as, of course, good governance of the resources. Next uh, photo. So, um, our links and economy related to oceans is one thing is shipping. This is uh, uh, the biggest Norwegian ship, shipping company, uh, Willemsen, uh, docked here in Suva. Uh, uh, it's a row row ship transporting cars all around the world, the biggest. All the cars from Europe and America in Australia are almost all cars are brought on, uh, on the Willemsen ships. Next picture. Uh, the second big uh, stream of income from, uh, for, for us from the ocean is fish. It's the second biggest export for us after oil and gas, and it's huge. Uh, one is fish farming, as you see here. The photo is of uh, salmon farms, and the salmon on the right, uh, held by a person, a fisherman, or a farmer, let's say. Uh, next picture. And then this is how uh, we fished in the olden days uh, in Lofoten, which we visited uh, a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, the consul and other consuls from the region and myself and the ministry, uh, we had a wonderful trip up in Lofoten where there's a rich uh, 
fishing grounds for wild fish, cod fish. This is how it was done earlier. Next picture. And this is how it's still done. Uh, this is bacalao. This is cod fish hanging uh, to dry in the north and later being exported uh, to uh, the rest of the world. Southern Europe, Mexico, Brazil, they love it. So together, next picture, this uh, fishing, uh, uh, both fund and wild is, is really uh, fundamental to our wealth. And thanks to the economic zones and the law of the sea, we are able to uh, utilize and uh, um, manage and harvest this uh, resource sustainably. Next picture. Uh, of course, uh, the continental shelf uh, is part of the Law of the Sea Convention. Very important that we have also clear lines of maritime border. I know from yesterday that you recently agreed the maritime border uh, in, uh, with uh, Fiji and uh, was it Papua New Guinea. Uh, very important agreements to have clear lines so you can start exploring and uh, uh, using uh, sustainably the resources also under. Uh, uh, the sea and uh, on the seabed and of course oil and gas uh, since we found oil uh, in Norway in uh, Christmas Eve 1969 has been a very important part of our uh, economy and our prosperity and next picture we are uh, exporting gas uh, natural gas clean natural gas we like to call it uh, to Europe and now we are the biggest uh, gas exporter to Europe, uh, European Union. Uh, I'll come back to that later, but this uh, goes straight. All our oil and gas e exported because our energy is based on hydropower. So we use electricity for 95% from hydropower in, in Norway. So oil and gas is exported. Next photo. Norway is as cold as Fiji is hot. This is a picture from Norway in July, which is midsummer in Norway. Okay, it's a bit, it's not on the coast, it's a bit up in the hill, but there, there can be snow even in, in the summer, as my wife, who's not from Norway, discovered when we first time arrived there in, in May, and she was a little bit surprised that it was snowing. That was a, a nasty surprise, but we have managed to deal with that. Um, next photo. Of course, the oceans since the time of the Vikings has been very important for Norway. This is a real Viking ship which you'll see in Oslo. It was found in uh, around my hometown, um, wh which was the capital in the Viking times. And the, with these uh, ships, uh, the Vikings uh, sailed and rode to America from Norway, across the Atlantic. Amazing uh, Siemens uh, traditions, as you have here in this part of the world. The ancient thousand year old Siemens tradition. We feel very much part of that same tradition, the connection that the oceans have. And the Vikings, of course, discovered America 500 years before Columbus uh, came. Uh, everyone knows that, uh, even though not everyone wants to uh, recognize that. Um, but that's uh, true. They did not settle, though. They left after a few years, came back. Uh, but uh, the uh, civilization aspects of the Vikings continued uh, with, uh, with uh, expeditions to the English islands, the British islands and Scotland to to bring civilizations to this part of the world, uh, which was close to us at the time. So uh, even though there's a lot of bad propaganda about the Vikings being plunderers and rapists, uh, we also have a, there are different perspectives on this. Not everyone uh, thinks they were so bad. Next picture. This is just a photo from Oslo on a normal summer day surrounded by oceans. Next photo. Um, this is from my hometown. Uh, or home island, I also come from an island, oceans all around. Next photo. This is also another illustration of how it looks where, where I come from. Just, and then here's my mother passed away last year, but she loved to be on the boat and myself on the, on the, on the beach, always around oceans. That's just to show you the emotional connection that I have and we have in Norway to the oceans. Next photo. Uh, so here is a historic photo from uh, September 2018. And now we are talking about the Pacific Island Forum. Very important, of course, the meeting that took place here in Fiji last week. This is the first time ever that the Norwegian cabinet minister visited the South Pacific. And it was uh, at the Nauru uh, summit. Uh, and this is the former president of Nauru. 
meeting with our minister for former minister for development. Next photo. This is uh, the year after at the Tuvalu PIF summit, and the la the shorter lady in the middle is our former foreign minister. First time a Norwegian foreign minister visited South Pacific, and uh, started very uh, or as part of our very important step up of relations between Norway and the uh, South Pacific. Next. Of course, we have big issues to deal with uh, together globally. Uh, one issue is uh, illustrated here, uh, overfishing in the open seas, a big, big problem. Uh, uh, fishing, which is far from sustainable and really uh, a big problem. Many, uh, several big nations are involved in, in uh, this, uh, which is being discussed now during uh, in the United Nations context, in the so-called BBNJ, bi uh, Biodiversity Beyond National Jurisdiction uh, process, very important process. Next photo, plastic pollution, the second big issue of, that we have in common, how to deal with uh, this. We have actually achieved uh, important uh, progress in terms of negotiations in the United Nations Environmental Assembly in Nairobi. Uh, there is a discussion on the way on the treaty to combat uh, marine plastic pollution. It will take time, uh, but this is extremely important. Huge problem for you, for us, for everyone in the world. Uh, it ends up on the beaches here. Uh, I think all of us can, are part of the problem, but the biggest problem, of course, are the big rivers uh, in Asia that bring out, the five big rivers bring out 90% of, of the plastic that you find uh, around here. Next photo. And of course, the Law of the Sea Convention, where we have, uh, as uh, we talked about, very important uh, common interest in uh, securing uh, the regimes for the Law of the Sea and the economic zones. Next one. And the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which I was very much uh, proud to be part of uh, negotiating and coordinating in Norway. Uh, and then for the first time, of course, number 14, an ocean goal, which we never had before. These were adopted back in 2015. Uh, that was a, a major step forward. Next photo. So this, I don't know if you know where this is. Uh, this um, photo is taken from an airplane, of course. Uh, it's Tuvalu. Uh, you see how narrow it is, how low lying it is, an illustration that you know very well of the uh, threat of climate change and uh, ocean warming. and uh, rising sea levels uh, that uh, brings oceans and climate uh, agendas together in a very, very uh, clear and strong uh, way. And we see it even in Europe, uh, rising uh, sea levels as a result of the melting of ice caps uh, in Greenland and Antarctica in particular, uh, but also as a result of uh, warmer oceans which are expanding. So we know that uh, uh, we heard yesterday at our event uh, at uh, the Hotel uh, Pacific, where the uh, Secretary General, Henry Pune, uh, spoke uh, at the opening together with me and uh, also the Permanent Secretary of the Fisheries Department from Fiji, uh, about his own home island, which had been uh, recently inundated uh, for the first time. Uh, and uh, these are uh, live and uh, strong testimonies of the challenge we are facing with, with, and you are facing in particular, with rising sea levels. Next photo. So I, I showed this photo because um, Norway was in a union with Sweden until 1905. We did not have our own diplomacy, our own foreign policy, our own foreign service. Uh, we had our own parliament, but we had a common king and a common foreign service. In uh, in uh, 1905, we became completely independent because we wanted to have our own consular and diplomatic service to uh, uh, conduct our own foreign policy. Uh, for trade and shipping uh, was, of course, uh, the traditional uh, security. Uh, trade shipping were the traditional parts of, of foreign policy. Uh, next photo. Um, and we are now, of course, this is the royal family on our national day, 17 May, from the balcony of the royal palace in Oslo, 
just to illustrate that we are every year celebrating our independence uh, and ability to conduct our own uh, sovereign affairs. Um, one gift the Swedes gave to us, uh, the Swedish uh, um, entrepreneur Alfred Nobel, he gave the Nobel Peace Prize uh, to Norway, uh, to Oslo, to give out every year, as you may know, uh, as um, illustration also of uh, the fact that Norway has always been working for peace and uh, security um, for ourselves and for, for the world. It's one of our, uh, let's say, trademarks. Next photo. This uh, back to Staatsor Lehmkoll, I'll show it again because it was built in 1914, uh, in fact, in Germany. Uh, that's the year the war, the First World War started. And we were neutral during the First World War. Next photo. But not in the Second World War, we were uh, occupied, invaded by the Nazis. And these are Nazi troops that are parading through Oslo on the 9th of April, 1940. Uh, where we lost our sovereignty uh, due to foreign uh, occupation, Nazi occupation, shock for the nation. So next photo. After uh, the war ended, we were among the first ones to sign the charter for the United Nations and to commit 100% to uh, work through the United Nations for peace, security, international development, and later sustainable development. Next photo. We also and, and, and this is the Security Council of the United Nations, which actually uh, is decorated, donated, and designed by Norway. It's the Norwegian room in the UN. The painting you see on the back is by a Norwegian artist. All the chairs and the tables and everything, wallpaper, is made uh, in Norway uh, and uh, renovated actually recently after it was opened uh, 70 years ago. We had a renovation 10 years ago. Uh, of everything still donated by, by Norway uh, to this important room where we are now this year and last year, thanks to your support and others in this region, uh, your vote, we are sitting around the table and trying to deal with big issues of uh, conflict in the world, including Syria, Afghanistan, and of course uh, now Ukraine. Um, next photo. And this is the General Assembly that you all know and you all have a seat in. Uh, all the uh, Pacific uh, Island states. Uh, everyone has one vote in the General Assembly, very important uh, factor for our ability to speak up as small nations in the world. Next photo. We also joined NATO to make sure that we were never again uh, occupied or threatened. These are the latest uh, Madrid summit family photo. You'll see the Norwegian minister, prime minister in the last uh, row there, together with others, 27 others. Next photo, and this is the current Secretary General, former Prime Minister of Norway, Jens Stoltenberg, is now Secretary General of NATO, which is very important for us in terms of uh, securing our uh, sovereignty and defense, uh, because we are a small country with big neighbors. We need uh, a common alliance to, to help us in case there is a crisis. Next photo. Here is uh, the European Union leaders. We uh, Norway chose not to join the European Union twice, we had referendums in 1972, 52% said no. We had the referendum in 1994, 51% said no. Uh, and nobody is talking about another referendum, even though we like the European Union and we are fully integrated economically, uh, but we are not sitting at the table and we're not part of the family photo where you see all the leaders in front of uh, Versailles just a couple of months uh, ago. Uh, next. We are a humanitarian superpower. I'm, I'm uh, choosing the World Food Program as an illustration of that uh, because uh, I was fortunate and honored to work for the uh, World Food Program for six years uh, as a chief of staff and director. And uh, of course, uh, the WFP won the Nobel Peace Prize in uh, 2020, which was a great uh, honor for them and the work that they are doing to support hungry people all around the world, including in this part of the world when hunger uh, or food security insecurity strikes as a result of cyclones and other natural disasters. And Norway is one of the biggest contributors to the United Nations humanitarian uh, system. Next photo. Of course, now the situation, uh, uh, the Cold War uh, at the end of uh, uh, 1989 uh, ended in a, a way that we never expected. 
there's been 20 years of, uh, of 30 years of uh, more or less peaceful uh, situation in, in Europe and in our neighborhood. Uh, but of course, uh, now uh, with the war in Ukraine, there's a new and more challenging situation after Russia invaded, uh, which has uh, led to increasing focus on uh, defense and uh, um, military spending in, in Europe, in, uh, including in Norway. Uh, so there, uh, this optimism which was uh, there for the last uh, 25, 30 years is no longer so strong about what's going to happen forward. Next photo. This is also affecting energy situation in Europe and uh, some coal fire uh, stations are being restarted because there is uh, now suddenly not enough natural gas to run the industry uh, in Europe. Uh, no, uh, Russia was the biggest uh, gas supplier to Europe until the war started. Now Norway is the biggest because uh, the uh, Europeans have reduced uh, the import and Russians have reduced their export. And we will see tomorrow whether they restart the big uh, pipeline of gas uh, to Germany or not. The European Union seems to expect that maybe it will not happen. This is a, a challenge to our climate change agenda and the Paris goals, obviously. Uh, people need energy. They need the uh, oil and, and gas. Uh, uh, and of course, we want to replace all the fossil fuels with renewables as soon as possible. But uh, we see now that uh, it will take more time. And this is obviously a setback uh, to, uh, to our climate, uh, or a potential setback to our climate change uh, agenda uh, that is uh, so uh, important to all of us. But it also shows the close connection between climate uh, and energy um, uh, policies in all our countries. Our role, of course, next photo. Um, this is our prime minister standing by the coastline. And next photo. This is our minister for energy talking to European Commission about increasing uh, Norwegian supplies of natural gas, but also of hydrogen. Uh, as you know, hydrogen can be produced by uh, hydropower or by other uh, by natural gas, other electricity, um, and it's a very promising uh, source of clean energy for the future. So these pipelines that are now producing and sending natural gas from Norway to the continent can be used also in the future for hydrogen. So we are hoping that, you know, uh, this will lead to a reduction of uh, CO2 emissions uh, from from Europe and Norway, we have come a long way in the last few years. But as I said, the situation with the energy crisis now is really creating uh, a, a challenge. And there's a fear now in Europe for what's going to happen in the winter. Of course, also with food prices, that's another uh, fear. Uh, they are going up very fast everywhere, and especially outside in, the, in Africa, and maybe also in this uh, part of the world in, in South uh, Pacific. Now we are, next photo, Norway. Well, this is another photo of NATO because of the uh, threat that uh, uh, is now being posed uh, and the uh, uh, distraction that we are uh, getting from, from the war in, in Ukraine. Next photo. And this is a photo from Oslo, uh, the Opera House, but I'm just showing this because we have plenty of electricity, as I said, uh, from hydro, the power clean, uh, clean electricity, which we're also exporting to Europe. Next. And here is the pipeline network of gas to Europe, just to show how much comes from Norway, from up top of Fotl, but also from the south, from Africa, and from uh, East uh, uh, Russia, and how dependent uh, Europe is on, on, uh, on natural gas uh, from, from us and, uh, and others. Now, in turn, next photo. Um, si since we are such a big oil and gas producer, we realize that we are contributing to the problem. So we're also making a big effort to uh, cut our own emissions. Uh, we have made the commitment to cut 50% at least by 2030. 
compared to 1990 and to be net zero by 2050. And we are doing this with heavy carbon taxes in Norway. It's challenging for us, but we people are ready to make the sacrifice. We also uh, increasing climate financing through the Green Climate Fund. We will double our financing for climate uh, adaptation, which also benefits this part of the world. I've been visiting um, the uh, um, Tina hydropower project in uh, Solomon Islands, uh, the river catchment project in Samoa in Apia, which are uh, among those financed by the Green Climate Fund, uh, which uh, where Norway is uh, one of the biggest uh, donor with a uh, hundred million dollars per year, and this is going to increase uh, further. This is an important part of our development uh, assistance. Um, so, of course, uh, we are next photo. We are trying to do this um, to as part of our diplomacy. So when I spoke about how we started as an independent nation with a focus on security and trade, foreign policy today is very much also about oceans, uh, climate and energy, uh, both for our own sake, for the planet's sake, but also diplomatically. It's very important for us that uh, Pacific Islands and other nations of the United Nations see that we are a committed partner uh, uh, in our foreign policies to create goodwill and support for our priorities, including at the United Nations. As you see, this is an illustration of the vote from the uh, development goals, which were uh, uh, appointed or approved uh, by the General Assembly in uh, 2015. Um, and there's, you know, of course, many uh, examples of uh, votes for the Security Council, uh, whether it's about the war in Ukraine, to have, uh, and from my side as an ambassador to this part of the world, very important that we uh, are on the same page, that we uh, can agree on the important issues, of course, also uh, surrounding oceans and law of the sea issues that we uh, have the many uh, island states sitting in the General Assembly here uh, voting together with us is a great, uh, I think, success of um, our common uh, diplomatic efforts to achieve important results for uh, both security and sustainable development uh, in the world. So uh, I think we saw that last week uh, at the Pacific Island Forum how important it was also when Australia came with a new approach and policy on climate change. It was very well received. The outcome, the document, the communique from the summit was very forward leaning, forward looking, whether it was on the climate emergency, on the regional security, uh, supporting all nations' right to choose their own uh, alliances uh, and partnerships. Um, and of course, on the sustainable uh, oceans issues like illegal fishing, plastic pollution, uh, and, and the law of the sea issues. So I think the fact that we have managed to, to, to build uh, broader coalitions and partnership with uh, Fiji and other Pacific uh, island states in this part of the world is uh, something that I will always uh, be uh, proud of having contributed to. And uh, 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 to say farewell here at this university uh, with this uh, excellent uh, stipend program underway on oceans is also a, a great uh, legacy that uh, I will take with me and our, uh, my successor will continue to follow up uh, in collaboration with you. So thank you very much. And I'm very happy to take a few questions if there, if there are some from either the hall or from uh, online. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that wonderful uh, presentation on ocean climate nexus for international security and uh, sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give another round of applause for our chief guest? Thank you. For those of you who uh, have been uh, holding your questions and uh, have been looking forward for an opportunity to uh, 
ask your question to our chief guest. Uh, this is um, our questions and answers uh, session. Please feel free to ask your question. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we will bring you the mic. Please feel free to indirect. Thank you. Any question? Looks like no one wants to ask any question. Please feel free. <laughs> this is the only opportunity that we will be having with the chief guest before he leaves the country. Yeah, I have one here. Thank you. Yeah, you go ahead, Shishio. All right. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, uh, His Excellency, for your uh, uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, I think the Pacific region can have uh, quite a lot good hopes from uh, after your presentation. Uh, could you highlight us uh, the, the the some of the uh, the major initiatives the world is is, is thinking of and and is, is gonna take. Uh, in near future, which will support the Pacific region, particularly uh, the needs and aspirations of the community, uh, as well as the academic organizations uh, like USP. Thank you. Can you hear? Yes. Well, thank you for that uh, question. I think I mentioned one uh, um, process, which is very important, is uh, the marine plastic pollution efforts uh, now taking place uh, in the United Nations, the negotiations that have started uh, in Nairobi on the treaty against uh, to combat plastic pollution. This is a major effort which will involve, of course, civil society and business as well uh, in terms of the production uh, side uh, and the use of uh, and the waste management of plastic, but also uh, related to the uh, possibility to clean up all the pollution which is already in the oceans, uh, including the microplastic, which is a huge problem. You cannot even see it. It looks very daunting and very terrible when you see all this plastic around. And uh, I think uh, we, of course, have to start at local and individual level. But uh, the work that is now kicked off uh, as part of our efforts to get started in uh, the uh, environmental assembly uh, will be very important. Then you have the efforts uh, against uh, fishing crime and illegal fishing, which is uh, taking place under the Blue Justice uh, Initiative, which uh, the Fijian uh, Ministry and the uh, Permanent Secretary spoke about yesterday at our event. Norway has also been pushing hard to uh, combat uh, illegal fishing uh, and report IUU fishing, as they call it. Uh, and uh, fishing crime, transnational crime connected to fishing. Uh, that's another uh, very important process. And then you have the so-called BBNJ process, where, which covers uh, biodiversity beyond the uh, exclusive economic zones in beyond national jurisdiction. Uh, that really uh, is a difficult process, open seas, how to regulate the commons uh, and overfishing included. Uh, but that's another important process which has been started. And finally, of course, I would mention the high-level panel, which I forgot to mention in my speech, the high-level panel on sustainable ocean economy, which was uh, started uh, on the initiative of Norway and Pacific Islands uh, with the co-chair, Norway and Palau, uh, started back in 2018. Among the members is your prime minister, Australian prime minister, Japan, Indonesia, African, Latin American, a couple of European countries, Canada, altogether 14 leaders, latest France and US, uh, committing uh, to uh, sustainably manage 100% uh, of the waters and seas under our national jurisdiction by 2025. Very important initiative, which we want to expand and promote beyond the 14 leaders that have committed so far. 
and the next meeting will take place in the margins of the General Assembly in New York in September. Um, and that is, uh, I think, the papers that have come out of the uh, high-level panel are very interesting. The first document came out in December 2018. Uh, focusing on the links between climate change and ocean, sustainable oceans. Uh, and all the leaders signed up to that was the first step. And then several good uh, papers and studies have come out later. So all of you who study oceans should look at the uh, website of the high-level panel on sustainable oceans economy. Uh, that is uh, among the many initiatives and processes that have started since we established the sustainable development goal number 14 for the first time in 2015. I have to say in the seven years since then, there's really been an amazing increase in focus on oceans, both diplomatically and academically in the world. Norway has always had it, uh, but now it's spreading and lifting to the highest level, which is very encouraging in spite of all the daunting challenges we are facing with the uh, uh, pollution and all the fish. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, I can see we have someone uh, here in the middle. After that, then we uh, pass on the mic uh, to the next person. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, um, for your um, very impressive uh, presentation. Uh, got to understand a bit more about uh, Norway. Um, I'll just ask the question in relation to uh, climate finance. Uh, that's one of the issues that uh, uh, developing countries are, you know, uh, trying to um, uh, and raise with the uh, developed country in terms of your, your commitment to uh, the Copenhagen uh, Accord on the, the pledges of $100 billion uh, uh, by developed countries for climate financing. And uh, you know, studies have showed that uh, developed countries that uh, kind of, there's a gap between uh, what's pledged and uh, uh, what's happening on the ground. Uh, in terms of uh, bridging the gap, is, uh, is that a priority, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, if a foreign policy, uh, you know, to increase the level of uh, climate finance. Uh, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, good question. And uh, um, as I said, uh, our efforts to support climate action, both at home in terms of cutting emissions and uh, internationally in terms of uh, financing uh, global efforts, uh, to uh, both for mitigation of uh, emissions, but also for adaptation to climate change has become a central or one of the central pillars of our foreign policy. In particular, I think vis-a-vis -vis the most vulnerable countries like the Pacific Islands and others in Africa and elsewhere uh, who are feeling the strongest impact of climate change. So. That is why we, from the beginning, as Norway and Sweden and a few other uh, Europeans, uh, have been uh, among the biggest donors to the Green Climate Fund, uh, which uh, we uh, were part of setting up. And we are sitting at the board uh, some 10, uh, 12, 15 years ago. Um, it's not, uh, of course, the biggest chunk of the 100 billion uh, that you, you rightly say was promised by uh, donor countries and the world in uh, 2009, I believe, at the Copenhagen uh, COP uh, to deal with uh, finance. But it's still a significant uh, portion, uh, which has several billion dollars portfolio of projects, uh, which also now benefits uh, several Pacific islands. It took some time. It was a bit slow. It, it is a um, bureaucratic machinery, which needs to approve uh, concrete projects presented by uh, different countries, including your own and Solomon's and Kiribati and others. But uh, what I've seen in the recent uh, few years since I've been here is that more funds than ever is uh, coming towards um, um, measures and projects in uh, the South Pacific region and Norway. We uh, 
the first four years we uh, provided 50 million us dollars per year now we next four year period we will provide almost 100 million dollars per year uh, and that brings us and sweden as the among the biggest donors and we are of course working to persuade other partners and donors to also provide more uh, climate financing including through the green climate fund and other multilateral uh, channels of course we know there's a lot of bilateral projects going on but our new minister has uh, pledged that we will further increase uh, funding for and uh, triple funding for climate adaptation which was mentioned by the permanent secretary of the government of fiji yesterday uh, as a priority for for your uh, country uh, we're talking about uh, measures or whether it's mangrove planting, I don't know. It, it can be disaster risk reduction measures, everything that uh, can help uh, communities and nations to adapt to the inevitable consequences of climate change that we're already seeing today and which will continue, unfortunately, regardless of how we manage to reduce our uh, emissions. So we are doing our share, I believe, very much Norway and uh, Nordic partners. And we hope that uh, all other partners will also step up and do even more to fulfill the pledges that we made uh, some years ago for financing uh, adaptation and mitigation in developing countries. Thank you, Your Excellency. Sianne, you may ask your question now. Then after that, I'll be sharing the online questions for His Excellency to respond to. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Excellency. And, uh... <clears throat> My name is Sione, and also I'm, I am a mathematician. So <clears throat> I was a little bit scared when you saw uh, the coal uh, industry uh, and you say it started to panning again. So I, um, my study was about coal biolysis, how to pan the coal. And I understand the uh, the, the, the pollution that uh, came from the uh, burning the, the coal, especially carbon monoxide. So my question is, um, is any plan the small islands like us have a voice to slow down the burning of coal? Thank you very much. Well, uh... First of all, Norway, we, we don't produce any coal, or we don't use any coal, we don't export any coal. Um, and I think there's broad agreement that coal is the most problematic of all uh, energy sources in terms of emissions of CO2. Uh, and I believe uh, the uh, uh, Pacific Islands uh, states have made that uh, very clear in the meeting last week as well at the summit, how important it is for them that uh, not only Australia, but also China and India and other countries that are using a lot of coal uh, must reduce uh, the amount of coal being uh, burnt uh, into the atmosphere for energy. So I, I think that uh, the, our partners, uh, Australia and others, recognize this very much and are making efforts to replace uh, coal with uh, renewables, solar, etc. Norway is a, a gas, natural gas and oil producer. Uh, and of course, we know that natural gas uh, is also a fossil fuel uh, that emits uh, CO2 when it's burnt by the consumer, wherever they are in Asia or in Europe. Um, but the uh, emissions.